What's up everyone? My name is Zach Sopak. And in this video, I'm gonna break down the four basic areas of product photography and give you some tips on how you can master them. This is a great video for beginners or for seasoned creators who are looking to spice things up with their photos. Get it seasoned, spice. All right, enough jokes, let's get into it. The first main area of product photography that's honestly the most important one for you to understand is lighting. Lighting is always the most important factor in getting a good quality image. In most product photography situations, you wanna have a nice, natural, soft light to shine onto your product. Having a soft, natural light will create less intense highlights and shadows on the product that you're shooting and having less intense highlights and shadows will create a more flattering looking light on your subject. And in my experience, I found that the best light that you could possibly use for photography is just window light. The way that light from a window just naturally wraps around an object just makes it look so incredibly professional. And the best thing is that it's absolutely free. Now, the only caveat with window lighting is that Obviously you can only shoot during the daytime and it's not always the best lighting conditions. Just because the sun is up doesn't mean that it's the right time to shoot. Depending on the time of day, you might find that the natural light is too warm or too cool for what you're looking for or depending on where your window is positioned, the lighting actually might still be too intense. So if natural light doesn't work for you, then obviously the alternative would be using studio lighting. Now, whatever I'm using studio lighting to do product photography, I'm basically just trying to reproduce the same effect that I would get from good natural window light. So that means I use a light set to daylight temperature. I use some sort of diffusion, whether that's a soft box or whether that's some sort of translucent and sheet to try to cut down on the harshness of that light because I still want to create those nice pleasing highlights and shadows on the product. And the cool thing too about studio lighting is that you can obviously position things differently than if you were just stuck to one window. So if you want to do more of a direct side lighting or if you wanted to do a more top-down lighting kind of situation, you can easily do that with studio lighting. And if I really want to take the studio lighting to another level, then I'll use something like an RGB light and I'll add in some different colors to accentuate whatever it is that I'm shooting. The second area of product photography that's important to understand and master is composition. Now, if you're new to photography, you may be wondering, well, what is composition? Simply put, composing an image means arranging the different elements within that image to suit the overall goal and outcome that you're wanting. So when it comes to product photography, you want to arrange every element within your image to highlight and to feature the product that you're shooting. When people see your photos, they should instantly know what it's about and what you're highlighting without a question. So for example, if you're shooting flat lay photography, don't overcrowd your image with a bunch of different things just for the sake of filling up space. And if you're shooting more of a real world use case kind of photo with that product, make sure that whatever you do, the product is the main feature and focus. Okay, this is probably my favorite part of shooting product photography. I love finding different textures and different backgrounds to really help accentuate the product that I'm shooting and really help it to stand out. This also gives you a great opportunity to put your own creative mark on whatever it is that you're shooting. The possibilities are really endless for what you can put inside of your photography. I love just going around to the different surfaces in my own home, like my desk, like a coffee table. I'll sometimes grab a blanket or just really Really kind of get outside of the box to find something that will add to the photo and create some nice interest and texture. You can even go on Amazon and you can find loads of different like marble type textures and wood type textures, all these different types of flat surfaces that you can use to create new backgrounds for your product photography. Just keep in mind with whatever textures or backgrounds you choose to use that they make sense to the product and that they add to it and they don't take away from it. Now that you've gotten the proper lighting, you've composed your shot properly, and you've added some flavor with the textures and the backgrounds, you gotta put the cherry on top 
with your photo editing. In this section, I'm gonna be talking about photo editing and more of a general approach specific to product photography. However, if you do wanna learn more about the basics of photo editing, I've got a really great playlist with a bunch of videos that I've made to get you started from not knowing anything to editing like a pro. I'm gonna put a link to that playlist up above and down below in the video description. When it comes to editing product photography, the most important thing to keep in mind is that the product is being represented accurately. To put it more plainly, you wanna make sure that the product that people see in your photography looks exactly like the product would be if someone was holding it in their hands. This means that you may need to be a little bit more reserved in the way that you manipulate your colors and adding presets, adding saturation, different things like that. Now, if you do find yourself wanting to manipulate some of the other colors in your image without affecting the main product, then I would suggest you use filters and adjustment brushes. And if you wanna learn how to use those in the basic toolkit inside of Lightroom, I've got a video that I'll link up there and down below as well. One other tedious part of product photography editing is removing all the little specks of dust and dirt and all the distracting elements within the image. Now, like I said, this is a tedious part of editing. I personally don't love having to zoom in all the way to the logo of a product and having to remove the specs or having to remove little things in the background that are distracting, but it really does help to make a difference. The last area of photo editing that I wanna to touch on is correcting your angles. Now this may not apply to every single product or every single photo that you take, but it is really effective for more boxy and angular products. So let's say you have a rectangular product and you wanna get a nice flat centered perspective. But when you went to go take your photo, maybe your camera was angled improperly. There's a very helpful tool inside of Lightroom called the Guided Transform Tool. And this tool allows you to easily correct these mistakes just by drawing these simple lines on the straight edges of your product and then just boom, it snaps everything to place and gives you that nice centered perspective. And there are your four basic areas of product photography and how to master them. I'm curious to know what was something that you learned or what was something that I left out in this video? Why don't you let me know in the comments down below? And hey, if you got value out of this video, why don't you go ahead and add some value right back to it by hitting that like button and also consider subscribing to this channel for more regular content just like this. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so you know anytime I post a new video. Well, hey, until the next time, my name is Zach Sopak. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.